welcome to every Christian church. Aren't you glad to be in God's house today? How many is glad to be in God's house today? Glory! Oh, <laughs> Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. We're going to have a good time. We're going back to the book of Revelation. And so we're going to follow Revelation chapter 5 today. So go ahead and get your uh, pens and pencils out and go ahead and paper so you can go ahead and take some notes. Because uh, it's in our backyard. What, what we're talking about now, my parents live in our backyard. It's not in our Revelation. So, so uh, come on and have a good time. Before. We're going to do some praise time first, though. Oh, everybody stand up. Check, check. There we go. Everybody stand up. <coughs> we are. <laughs> Everybody say this with me. This is the day that the Lord hath made. Let's try not to mess it up. Oh, I got it wrong. That was last week. <laughs> I mean, Y'all remember that from last week? Okay. This is the day that the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in the end. Yeah, give them all the hand clap. Everyone, you got, I got, no, you got. <laughs> All right, me, I got this in my hand. That's the hint of Justin. Because there is no, there is no uh, uh, PowerPoints. Ready? These are the two most important hours of my week. Help me to cherish them. I am here today to worship, not to be entertained. I'm singing to an audience of one. Accept my worship, oh Lord. Give them another hand clap. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day, this chance to be in your house, to worship you in the spirit of truth. Let us know and see and understand that you're in total control. No matter what we're going through, you're in total control. We trust you 100%. In the name of Jesus, we give this day to you. The church said, Amen. 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 Y'all ready to worship? Y'all just, just follow us. We, we, we will take y'all down the road a little bit. How many want to do some praise road? Y'all ready to go? All right, ready? So I saw the light. I saw the light.
can see all the stuff going around us, and there's so much stuff that's out of our hands, you can't do a thing about it. There's only one thing to do is pray. That's it. Just pray. You got to pray, and you got to just believe that God's got this. And you know what? If I didn't believe that God had this for so many things, so many times, it's absolutely drive me wild. But I know, I know that I know. We're going to talk about that today. We're going back into Revelation that God's got this. But you know what happens when He comes in on the scene? His glory is always present. His glory. Say it again with me. His glory is always present. Ready? Yeah, ready? It's glory, glory.
Yeah, Lord, just go ahead and just worship me. Just worship me. Yeah, give him a hand, hand, worship him. We're going to do what Cosby lives, and then I'm going to go right into Revelation because it's perfect. Why don't we get ready to do it? Ready? Because he is. Telling us, I, I, 
uh, I really felt uh, the Lord just told me to stop at verse 5. And don't even go away through verse 5 yet. Just, just stop. So we're going to talk about the scroll today. But, but here it is. Now, 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 Revelation, who is worthy? Now, up until now, we talked about the glorified Christ uh, in, in uh, chapter 1. And we talked about the seven churches in chapter 2 and 3. We talked about the rapture of the church in 4. And uh, we also talked about uh, in 4 1. And in the 4, we talked about the throne room. So now, remember, I told you the seals are coming. Uh, you know, we always hear talk about seal team 6. Uh, I'm thinking about that. And once we started the seals, called seal team 7. <laughs> Amen. Because we got 7. God loves 7. Amen. 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 7 7 7 is number of perfection. Number of completion is just God's awesome. When you see God using seven to explain something, that means it's very powerful. So, so again, now we're going to talk about the seals and who can open them? Who, who can open these seals? Who is the legitimate heir? Who is the one that is good enough to open the seals? I want you to think about this. Who is the one that is good enough to open the seals? I'm going to give you a little hint. Ain't nobody in here can do it. Nobody. Okay? None of us can do it here. So let's go ahead and I'm going to just let you, you know, we're going to read this a little bit and then we're going to go into it. Revelation chapter 5, verses 1 through 5. Of course, this goes a lot further, but we're not going there today. We'll go there next week. I saw the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the back side. It's written on the front and back. Now, this was a scroll. To him, a book is a scroll. They didn't have bindings and have those kind of books. They had scrolls. If you look at some of the epistles, it was one scroll. Could you think about it literally as like a, 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 a little bit bigger than maybe a piece of our normal paper, but it, but it was papyrus and vellum and it was rolled up in scrolls, and so maybe the apostle, the first apostle of John, second John, third, is just on one sheet of paper. And you get looking at all of them. If you look at the book of Revelation, it's going to be a whole lot longer. And I'm going to explain about that book in just a second. But it's a scroll, okay? So I saw the right hand of him that sat on the throne, a book written within and on the back side. You got to remember something. Most of the time, 99% of the time, it was always written within the scroll, not on the front and back. Okay? It was on the front. So there's very some powerful stuff here that's going on. So, uh, uh, on the back side, it was sealed with seven seals. Didn't mean the seven seals were sealed across the front. It meant the seven seals were sealed, so you had a section, and a seal would stop it. You pop that seal, and up in the next session, section, you pop that seal, so that's how that was. So it was one book, but it had seven seals because it was divided up into seven parts. Okay? So I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? And no man in heaven, nor on earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon, and I wept much. That word wept means literally to wail out loud. Here's John. He's here. He's, he, he's gone up. He's already seen the church. He sees what's going on. The church has been raptured. Uh, he sees the elders, the 420 elders, the four beasts. He sees all this worship going on in heaven. He sees the throne room. And now the, the, the crowning event of this throne room, because after this we leave the throne room. After next week we leave the throne room and we go to earth. Okay? Revelation, once it goes to chapter 6, it leaves the throne room and it goes to earth. Okay? So this is the pinnacle of the throne room experience. And so now, he sees all this stuff going on around him and it's really, really awesome. And then he sees this book and nobody's worthy to open it. And the Bible says that he wails out loud because of all this glory that he sees. And yet, it seems to be stopped because no man was found worthy to open or to read the book or even look therein. And one of the elders said unto me, Weep not, behold the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, that hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seals thereof. So let's go to this for a minute, okay? 
And you know, there's, there's, there's uh, who's worthy to break the seals? Who's worthy to open the book? See that book and the way it's rolled around? It's one long book, but it's sealed. So you got one part of the book in the second part, third part, and to the seventh part. Let me tell you something about these seals. This book has seven seals. Now, uh, at the end of the seven seals, there's going to be seven trumpets. And at the end of the seven trumpets, there's going to be seven bowls. But the way it works is at the end of the, the seventh trumpet, or the seventh seal, is going to be the number one opening, of, and that is the seven trumpets. At the end of the seventh trumpet, the seventh trumpet is going to be the beginning of the seven bowls. So this is some heavy-duty stuff going on here. This is probably one of the most complex. And, and honestly, if it weren't for the times that we lived in, it, it would probably just boggle our mind. But because of the technology that we have and because we have all this computerized stuff and we have all these weapons that can destroy the earth and because of the way the earth right now is in so much turmoil. Uh, uh, let me read something to you. I can't send it out as mighty army because it's just too big. And I was wondering exactly how I could send this out. But here's what, it's kind of like today. Watch this. Put 100 red and 100 black ants in a jar and nothing will happen. But if you shake the jar, the reds think that the blacks are the enemy and vice versa. The real enemy, however, is the jar shaker. The same is true in society. Before we fight, we should ask ourselves, who shook the jar? Wow. That is so powerful. Let that, let that just, just sink in for a while. That is so, so, so powerful. So, so we got this, this book. Now, something about this book, watch this. They're, they're, we're going to talk about the book. That's all we're going to talk about mainly. Now, the three characteristics of this scroll or this book. First, let's watch this now. The scroll was in the right hand of God. Now, you got to remember something. Now, the book's in God's hands. Not in Jesus' hands yet. It's in God's hands. God is in charge of human history. God is in charge of your history. God is in charge of what's going on around us. Not, 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 not any other nation. We're not, the United States is not in charge. Iran's not in charge. Iraq's not in charge. Afghanistan's not in charge. The, uh, uh, the Democrats, Republicans, uh, communism, uh, socialism, whatever. None of that is totally, none of that's in charge. God's in charge. God, the Father, is in charge. Somebody say that. God, the Father, is in charge. And because we know that God is in charge, then you know what? I don't like the stuff that's going on around me. I don't like it. I don't like stuff I'm seeing. But at the same time, I know that God is in charge. And although I keep thinking every day, how much more are we going to? How much more are we going to have to endure? It? And just how much crazier can it get? Because we don't know, but God already knows. And He's letting us know here. I got this. Somebody say, our Father's got this. He has a definite plan, and He has a definite purpose for the universe. We don't have to fear war. We don't have to fear Russia. We don't have to fear an unstable economy. We don't have to fear the environment, drugs, criminal society, or the other massive problems that have no answer. Why? Because God has the answer. And it's not going to be long before God will be sitting. This right here is going to take place. And what's going to happen is God is going to take it back. This is not the world. The world does not belong to certain parties or certain countries. The world is God's. Right now the devil has got a lease on it. He's the prince of the power of the air, the God of this world. But pretty soon his lease is going to be up. And when his lease is up, God's going to take it back. Amen. Amen? So, 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 so we ought to be the most optimistic people on the earth. Because we know our Father's got this. So, so, first it's in the right hand of God. Now watch this. It's written on both sides. I told you about it. It's kind of, it sounds kind of crazy, don't it? But, but say, say it means uh, nothing more could be added to it. See, if it was empty on the back, that meant somebody could write something else in there. Or because it's full on the inside and out. And in Revelation 22, yeah, y'all get your Bibles out. I want y'all to read this with me. Revelation 22, verse 18. Let's just 
just start at 16 because it just gives us some more flow. I, Jesus, have sent my, sent my angel to testify to you these things in the churches. I am the root and offspring of David, the bright and morning star. And the Spirit and the bride say, Come, and let him that hears say, Come, and let him that is a thirst come. And whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely, which means we all have this, we've all been invited to the table. Verse 18. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of this prophecy of this book, if any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in the book. And if any man take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. He which testify these things saith, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so come. Lord Jesus, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. So, so this book is complete. It's written on the front. It's written on the back. And God says, I don't want you to add to it. There's no need to. I don't want you to take away because everybody needs to see this. And so this, this book is written on both sides. Those that are written on both sides. It's sealed by seven seals. You see, th this is the key to unfolding. Revelation right there. That scroll is getting ready to be handed to Jesus. That is the whole key to everything in Revelation. That's why I really didn't feel comfortable going further than the seal today or the seals because if we miss this part, we're going to miss it all. Remember, there's seven seals. On the seventh seal comes the seven trumpets. At the end of the seven trumpets, on the seventh trumpet comes the seven bowls. So everything is within this book. And like I said, it's written on the front and it's written on the back because it's so powerful. It is also the title deed of this earth. And because it's the title deed of this earth, guess what? The prince of the power of the air, the god of this world, is getting ready to find out just who is in charge. Amen? Amen. I, I can't wait for this to take place. I, I would love for it to take place right now with the exception of I know there's people that need to be saved. Other than that, I wish he would come right now. Even John said, even so, Lord, come quickly. So now, so now let's just take it a little, let's take it a little deeper. Y'all say, put the plow down, preacher. Put the plow down. Put the plow down, preacher. There you go. Are you ready? Here we go. When we look at this scroll, and we look at the seven seals, it shows us something. Now, let me, let me, let me just go ahead and, and put some history in this. Because remember, when God does something, He does it in a way that you can look around. He uses things around us. Jesus used fishermen. He stood he got on the boat. He used it as an amphitheater to tell everybody. He used bread, bread and loaves. He, he, he would talk about uh, 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 the mountain being moved. So, so, so Jesus liked to use things around us so we could always have something as a, 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 a point of reference. So now, seven seals. Did you know back in that day, if you were, let's just say Steve was to have a right of will. If he was to write a will, in order for that will to be legal, he'd have to have seven witnesses. Not only would he have to have seven witnesses, but... Each witness would have to attach their own personal seal. Wow. So every will, if somebody said we're going to read the will, if you didn't see seven, seven waxed seals, then it was not a legal will. So this is the last will and testament of God, what he wants to do. And only when the person that it was given to arrived, in the presence of the seven witnesses, could the seals be opened. So here's this book. It's got the seven seals. And the seven seals, the last will and testament of God, what he wants to do with this earth, the title deed, so to speak, is getting ready to be given to Jesus. So Jesus can work the will of the Father. Wow, some powerful, powerful stuff. Not only does it show the last will and testament of God, but also it shows uh, that the book is large. It's written on the front and back. Remember, it's complete. It's powerful. You don't have to add to or take away. He even says don't add to or take away. 
plus the seven seals are required to bind it. Because it's so big, it's so massive. It is 13, 13, 14 foot long. It's got to be rolled up and stopped and rolled up and stopped by a seal, rolled up and stopped by a seal because each, each portion is so powerful and it's got so much stuff. If you didn't stop and think about the first part, you would miss the second part, you'd miss the third part, fourth part, fifth part, sixth part, seventh part. So, so the book is actually large. It's a very, very large book. But also, the secrecy of the book. He wanted to keep the events of the end time hid until God himself was ready to reveal them. You see, one thing, man's smart. We put a man on the moon. Well, we're, we're, we're going to get ready to send a man to Mars. You know, we've gone out, we got this Hubble telescope and something more or even greater than that, and we, we, we see way out, but no matter how far out we can see, there's still more that we can't see. My, my, I love this when I was uh, taking, when I was at the university, I was taking, taking uh, a science. They, they showed, uh, I believe it was the Hubble telescope at the time, they actually took a picture of the farthest galaxy that they could take a picture of. You can look it up. And it looked like an eye. And in the eye was a cross. Wow. That's powerful. So, so powerful. But man has all this stuff, but no matter how much we know, man can never figure out the events, not by his own intellect. Back in the day, when I was a little, little boy and I heard, I'd hear this stuff, they, they had one version of what was going to happen because they just did it with what they knew. Nowadays, this stuff is right here in front of us. It's at our back door. We cannot, we cannot deny what's happening. And we can see how it can go. Daniel, in Daniel 12 and 8, said, told God, said, said we have to seal up the book. It was sealed by God until the end time. In other words, people aren't ready for what I'm getting ready to show them. They're not going to be able to figure it out. But guess what? Now, with all the stuff that's happening around us, wow. Wow. So, so, it's the last will and testament of God. The book is large. And it's revealing the secrets of God. Now, the Bible said that when he saw this, and he wanted the book open, But they looked around and they searched all of heaven. They searched all of earth. They searched under the earth. And when they searched, they found no man who was able to even look in it, much less touch it. And John weeps. Because he's got this far. And he wants God to complete the revelation that he's given him. But something keeps stopping him. Some of y'all in here right now, let's just pull it back to us. Some of us in here, we've come so far with God. But something keeps stopping us from taking it further. Maybe, just maybe, one, God's not ready for you to take it further. Number two, maybe you're not ready to take it further. I got up this morning and I faced my greatest enemy before I ever got out of my house. morning, you saw your greatest enemy. It's not Satan. It's you. Because Satan can only do what you allow him to do. And God doesn't want him to. And God's given you power to overcome him. So, 
Some of us want to go further in God. But we're trying to do it. Just like here in Revelation, there's no man that can do it. You could go further if you get your hand off of it. And trust Jesus, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, to take you further. So now, let's just do it. The search fails. No, none in heaven were found worthy. Look, not the angels, not the four creatures, not the 24 elders, not the redeemed ones. No person on earth was found worthy. No statesman, no educator, no scientist, no minister. No person under the earth, nobody from among the dead. And definitely no demon from hell. I just want to stop again and say if you could just learn to get out of your own way. Last week we talked about triple things behind us. Maybe that thing we're tripping on behind us is because we're holding on to something that we should let go of. Maybe we just can't go forward because we just think we can fix it ourselves. There comes a time where God alone can do it. So now, let me just go a little bit further, and then, then we're gonna we're gonna uh, gonna actually gonna get out of here early today. I think. <laughs> Y'all can actually beat the Baptist to McDonald's. Ready? The Lion of the Tribe of Judah. Now, this is some powerful stuff. Revelation 5 and 5. What? Weep no more. Behold, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has conquered so that he can open the scroll and its seven seals. You know where this comes from? This actually comes from Genesis. It's up where you can see it. Genesis 49, 8 through 10. It says, Judah, your brother shall praise you, and your hand shall be on the neck of your enemies. Your father's son shall bow down before you. Judah is a lion's cub. For the, for the prey, my son, you have gone up. He stooped down, he crouched as a lion and as a lioness. Who dares rouse him? The scepter shall not depart from Judah, Judah nor the ruler's staff from, beneath, from between his feet, until tribute, tribute comes to him, and to him shall be the obedience of the peoples. Wow. Wow. Watch this. Who is he? The lion of the tribe of Judah. I'll give you three guesses in the first in old camp. Who is the lion of the tribe of Judah? Jesus. 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 You see, God through Jesus, number one, he redeemed all things through the lamb. They didn't like him when he came because they were expecting somebody to come with power and authority to crush the Roman government. Somebody to come in and just step up and be in total control and tell them all, y'all just lay down at my feet. I got this. And he didn't do that. Because he came as a lamb. They didn't understand God's plan of redemption. That God had laid out the plan all the way from the garden when he said, when he talked to, to the serpent, he said, you're going to bruise his heel, but he's going to afflict your head. You watch this, what's going to happen. He's going to put you down. Here it was, the lamb. But guess what? Next time he comes, he's not coming as a lamb. When he reclaims all things, he comes as a lion. Wow. <coughs> I can't wait. It all tells us the Thessalonians when he comes. He's going to destroy the devil with the brightness of his coming 
So at the end of this thing, when he destroys the devil, what does he got to do to fight the devil? What does he got to do to defeat the devil? All he's got to do is show up. Just show up. And when he shows up, he's going to take him down with the brightness of his coming. So and here's my question. And, and Brandon, come here and play us something. The king is coming. I stopped it right here because we're going to talk about this lamb next week. Because this lamb's going to be kind of weird. You just said the lion's coming. The lion is coming. But he sees the lamb. So that we gotta, we got to talk about this. This is some deep stuff. Deep, 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 deep stuff. Everybody stand. Every head bowed, every eye closed. You said, well, we're our own worst enemy. Yeah, we are, but we still have an enemy. <laughs> There's several of them. One of them is death as an enemy. He's the last death or the last enemy. Satan is definitely our enemy. We're our own worst enemy. There's a lot of enemies out there that we have to fight. And I know there's times where you wish things would just be all over with. This morning I was trying to be funny when we were practicing. Instead of singing, I'll fly away, I said, I'll run away. <laughs> I'll run away some morning. <laughs> It'd be nice if everything was just over. But that's not how it happens. But I can promise you, when the lion comes on the scene, things are going to change. years he's going to show us how it should have been done from the very beginning. Every head bowed, every eye closed. <clears throat> if you're here today and you would take an honest look at yourself and you would say, Lord, I, I really I, I got a feeling that we're going to be around when these heaven seals, seals start to open and I don't want to be Beyond the first one, I want to be out of here. I want to be raptured away from all this. And God, I don't think I'm ready. I know I'm not where I should be with you. With nobody looking around, every eye closed, every head bowed. We just put that hand up and just say, look, I, I'm not sure and I'm ready. I really am not sure. When those seals start coming open, I, I, I don't want to be here. I don't want to be here for all that stuff. I, I can't stand the thought of all this stuff coming down on us. Bless the Lord. Bless him. Maybe you're here right now and you're going, well, I, I know. Safe in redemption. But me and God, we're not as close as we used to be. And I really, really want to be closer than I've ever been before. So I don't mess out. And so that I can be a witness for him along the way until he does come and take us away. With nobody looking around, every head bowed, every eye closed. Just put a hand up and say, I'm not as close as I should be. But, but I really want to make it, I want to make it better. All right. Let's all pray together. Lord, Lord I, thank you I thank you for your promise. Of redemption. I thank you that you've got us. I thank you that Satan only has a lease on this earth. That you, Father, hold the title deed. And Father, help us to give us to you in a very powerful way. Help us, Lord, to trust you with our heart and with our soul and with our past and with our present and with our future. We thank you for all you do for us, God. And we thank you for all that you're going to do. God, we rededicate our lives to you right now in the name of Jesus. There's no way we can handle this without you. And we thank you 
for accepting us as we draw close to you. Your promise is you'll draw close to us. And we thank you for it. In the name of Jesus, we pray. It's coming. Man, you can see it, you can feel it, you can smell it. It's coming. But you know, God's got a peace in all this for you. The other day, Tamala gave her mother this little candle. And this little candle was a soothing, I call it like being in the therapist office because since I walked in the house, I, I knew something smelled different. It smelled good. It smelled different. And after smelling it for a while, I said, wow, that's kind of relaxing. And I said, oh, no wonder. This is one of those candles that are supposed to be there for you to make you, you know, you know. And so I said, you know what? That's the same thing that happens when we pray. And God just bathes us in his comfort. We feel the same thing. And it's so awesome. So today my prayer to you is, as we go through Revelation, don't be afraid of it. Don't, no, do not be afraid of it. But instead, cling to it. Hold on to it. Because people are going to start asking you questions about this. And you can be able to give them an answer. A legitimate answer. A real answer. And also, remember, as long as you stay under the blood, you're going to be fine. It's going to be okay. So... Starting, this is our journey. We've been all this way to all those churches and all this. And now, now, starting starting now, the seven seals of getting ready to be delivered. And once those seven seals are delivered, delivered literally all hell is going to break loose. And I don't plan on being here. Amen. I plan on going to the rapture. But just in case some of y'all decide you want to stay around and hang around and play around with it, you'll know what to do. <laughs> I'm playing. I'm none of y'all want to hang around with this. Amen. Ain't God good? Tuesday night, we're having a good time. We, we really, it's really been very, it's been awesome. And, and uh, we got a few more weeks of this. And then we're actually going to start on something called Triggers. I'm not talking about Roy Rogers' horse either. Okay? We're talking about triggers. What triggers you? And how do you handle the trigger when the trigger is pulled? What do you do? So we're talking about that on Tuesday nights. But right now, we're still talking about just how to communicate. And it's really, really, really been good. You love the Lord? Amen. Brother Steve? Father God, we just praise you, Lord, and love you. And we, we thank you for being here. And we thank you for being in control. Lord, let us not worry. Let us trust you. Lord, we know we're under your blood. And there's nothing can take us out of your hand. In Jesus' name, we thank you again. Amen.